Hi friends and creatures of the internet, I'm Omnivorous, and if you're a magic player, and oh, I'm a magic player, then you're probably familiar with the hype that comes with a lot of the cards that come out. We get hyped about so many of our new cards, but we get hyped about the cards that make us salty the most of all. Being vocal about cards that annoy us can be a very good thing for Magic the Gathering, especially in our competitive formats where it will bring attention to cards that are just a problem and need to be dealt with. I'm looking at Pioneer and Underworld Breach and the Inverter of Truth. That was complained about for a long time and it took forever for Wizards to take action against it. They should have responded to that hype. And then there are other times where we shouldn't really pay attention to the hype against a card. We're going to look at Turgrid, the most overhyped card in Commander. Turgrid, the god of fright. Really, I don't know why people are complaining about this card. This card is really not that big a deal. Turgrid is one of the gods released over a year ago in February of 2021, and she has been the topic of a possible ban since her release. With Sheldon Meanery of the Rules Committee citing it as one of his most hated cards of 2021, and it being the target of various blog posts and other content saying that it should be or will be banned. Well, there's really no reason for that. Yeah, Sheldon has some power. He's one of the gurus of Commander. He helped create the format. He helped pioneer the format. And he is one of the main guys on the Rules Committee. But it is still a committee. And although Turgrid has only been out for a little over a year, it is one of the most popular mono-black commanders on EDH Rec currently. Only getting beaten out by Carrick. So let's take a look at why she's so popular and why does she deserve to be banned and why she really doesn't. Let's take a look at the God of Fright. Turgrid is a 4 5 legendary god with menace for 3 and 2 black. The real reason people hate Turgrid is because she says whenever an opponent sacrifices a non token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. So she takes a salty situation and just cranks it up to ocean level. Turgrid is an MDFC, so the other side of Turgrid is Turgrid's Lantern. It is three and a black. It has tap, target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. You can then pay three and a black to untap Turgrid's Lantern. Really, no one's crying about the Lantern part, but that's actually the more devastating part of this card. Everybody's more focused on the God, which will steal things from opponents whenever they sacrifice something or discard a card, which will happen often in wheel strategies. Now, there is always the very basic argument of it dies to removal. Why not just play more interaction and just kill it on sight and not let Turgrid do her thing. And that is a very good argument. That is definitely a good point. People need to play more removal in Commander. But my argument is that she doesn't do enough by herself. She needs lots of other cards and lots of setup for her to do her thing. She doesn't generate the mass amounts of mana that we get from Urza the moment he hits the battlefield, as well as him having a massive attacker to help him out. She doesn't sit in the command zone generating tokens nearly for free, only to come out and swing for a billion. She doesn't bypass the commander tax in order to hit the opponent and generate card value, as well as taking nearly half their life in one shot. And being mono black limits what she can do in the competitive format, so she's not really a good option if you're playing CEDH. So really, it all comes down to how bad does she make you feel? How bad does she make your opponents feel when they play against her? How likely are they to complain and stamp their feet when all of their stuff goes from their hand onto your side of the battlefield? And this is the same kind of hate that we see with Bruvac, who specializes in mono blue mill. But the thing with Bruvac is most people, although they hate him, don't see him as a threat because mill is so difficult to pull off in Commander.
But how does she stack up against all of the commanders that we do have banned and don't want back into the format? Well, Stephen Johnson of Cool Stuff Inc. wrote a pretty damn good article about it, so I'm going to go ahead and link it here. In it, he talks about one of the banned commanders, Leovold of Trest. He says, Leovold was banned not because it made for a miserable play experience, as much as for the easy game lock you could get with something like Teferi's Puzzle Box. There will be a call for people to ban Turgrid, but Turgrid's lock isn't nearly as extreme. Let's say you manage to get Turgrid, God of Fright, and Shell of Dread whispering one out at the same time. If you force your opponents to sacrifice a creature at the start of every turn and Turgrid winds up giving you control of that creature, it's going to be hard to lose the game. Your opponents have to play more than one creature per turn to keep ahead, and you'll be gaining creatures and getting one back out of your graveyard on your own upkeep. That's not a lock. So basically, Steven is saying what I've been saying, is that she doesn't do enough on her own. With cards like Leovold of Trest, he literally makes it so hard for people to play the game. If you're trying to do more than one thing a turn, you will run out of a hand before you even have any issues with something like Teferi's Puzzle Box or any wheel effect that prevents you from drawing any more than the one that you have that turn. We saw this kind of denial also banned off of Hole Breacher, which I honestly kind of disagree with, but at the same time understand. The thing with Hole Breacher is that it gives way too much value with the treasure tokens that it creates off of preventing your opponents from drawing. It's not the ability itself that's the issue. Now, with Leovold, the issue is that he is your commander and that he keeps coming back and consistently denies your opponent's draw, which will lock them out of doing much of anything in the game. It's pretty much the same thing with Iona, Shield of Emeria. You're basically locking out the monocolor player, if there is a monocolor player at the table, from doing anything. And you're basically asking them to have a colorless solution, which they may or may not have to take out your commander. Moving on to the next couple of banned commanders, we have Golos, Tyler's Pilgrim, and Grizzlebrand. These two got banned for being just way too much of a value engine. And there was really no way to respond to this. But again, looking at all of these banned commanders, they immediately impact the game, usually for the worst, as soon as they hit the board. They don't need any other cards to help them out, they just end up sucking. But I'm not done there. Not only do you need the God of Fright and then several different ways to actually make your opponents discard or sacrifice to get any value off of her, but it also dependent on your opponents. What cards they have in hand? Do they have any cards in hand? Or do they have any cards on the battlefield worth sacrificing? Maybe they're playing a Spellslinger deck that doesn't have many good permanents. That's just too much, too chance to make her really relevant and really worth banning. Now, I've played with her a lot. I actually have a mono black deck that is one of my favorite commander decks in my collection is my mono black deck. Turgrid is not the commander because she just doesn't do good enough. Now she is in the deck as the deck is mono black sacrifice and discard, but she is just not good enough to lead it. In the last year that I've played with Turgrid, I've only seen her go off once. And that was because an opponent played a wheel, drawing us all seven cards, which let me discard us a lot of cards and get the advantage. So at the end of the day, we have to ask, is it worth banning Turgrid when she doesn't do anything by herself? When she doesn't do anything if your opponent's hands are empty or if their boards are empty? Or if they're playing a Spellslinger deck that doesn't rely on having a lot of permanents. Uh, there's just so many things that are wrong with asking for this ban. It's all because your feelings got hurt. Somebody played Turgrid against you and you didn't like it. Now, I will say, for people that are just coming into Magic or just coming into Commander, yes, that is definitely a feel bad to run into something like Turgrid but that's not a good enough reason to actually ban her. I feel like that's a conversation that you need to have between your opponents 
at the start of the pod. What kind of game are we going to be playing? How much fun are we going to go for? Are we going cutthroat or not? Um, that's the kind of discussion that you need to have at the start of the game. And if somebody is going to bring a Turgrid deck to a pod of beginning Magic players, then those beginners need to actually think about whether or not that person is somebody they want to play with. If they're going to be that person, then, yeah, what else are they going to do? Play some CDEH with you? But again, your feel bad is not a reason to ban the card. Sorry you got swept one day when your hand was flush with good stuff. So yeah, I don't think Turgrid should be banned, and Stephen Johnson agreed with me. He ended his article with, I don't think Turgrid should be banned, but I also don't think Turgrid is particularly good for the health of the more casual side of our format. We'll get through it, but the casual players who find themselves stuck against an even slightly tuned Turgrid deck won't enjoy it. Of course, those casual players could just run more removal. We should all run more removal. It's a lesson for all of us, and Turgrid might just be the commander to finally drive that lesson home. Again, she is not that bad and should not be banned, but if you're a Turgrid player, don't try and sit down at a pod and lie about what you're doing, especially to new players. That's kind of like sitting down at a pod with new players that don't know that you're secretly running a CEDH deck but are really running a CEDH deck because you just, you know, change the commander to hide the CEDH deck. Yeah, I've seen that happen before. I know who you are. But that's just my take. The salt of Turgrid is very mild, kind of like, you know, pretzel salt. It's okay. It's not bad. And she shouldn't be banned. But hey, I might be wrong. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you disagree. Do you just hate Turgrid so much that you think she should go away even though she does nothing when she answers the battlefield? Give good reasoning and hey, I might agree with you. Maybe she really does need to go. Keep it here at the all-consuming nerddom for more Magic the Gathering, Commander content, and other nerdy stuff. Or you can check me out on Twitch at The Omnivorous Nerd, where I often play RPGs, focusing on some of the worst in history. Right now, I'm playing through a painful one. You guys should check it out. It's really rough. Hope you enjoyed the rant. Y'all stay hungry, and thanks for watching.